Previously on the Shade Tree Surgeon Channel. But no, we're getting evicted and I have to get literally every single thing that's in this shop has to be out today. This is literally nothing I could do. Uh, so yeah, I have to move the shop in one day. We are getting evicted. This is it. This is it. Rapstar Garage is over. I've been up since sometime yesterday. The days always kind of blend together when you're up for over 24 hours, but I'm officially in Portland. All right, Kyle, will you get my over under on this making it 4,000 trouble free miles? <laughs> it's got the Amanda Zitto seal of approval. Who's been cross country before, so obviously we're gonna be lying. One great leap for man, one giant step for scumbag time. What's up, Weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and they say every journey begins with a single step. Well, in this case, this journey began with a series of unfortunate steps and unfortunate events uh, culminating in me being evicted from my shop, uh, somehow ending up almost 4,000 miles away from home, my home in Florida, in Oregon, on a 1979 shovel head that I'm gonna attempt to ride all the way from here in Portland, Oregon. Back to Tampa. I don't know if I'm gonna thank him or if I'm gonna cuss him, but this is Circus Bear Moto right here and uh, he's the one who made all this stuff possible. So yeah, here we go. I don't know what I'm thinking really or why I decided it would be a good idea to buy a 1979 shovel head sight unseen and see if it could make it 4,000 miles cross country. But that's what we're doing, baby. And you helped <laughs> or hurt. Hard. Or, yeah, exactly. You know what? Abel says it's fine. He just seems very trustworthy. He's tall. He smells pleasant. He's very nice. He's been very nice to me up here. And I might be cussing his name somewhere in the middle of the Nevada desert. But for right now, dude, shovel heads and gold wings on the Pacific Coast Highway. If this is the only good time I have during the whole trip, it's been a pretty damn good time. Let's do it, baby. <laughs> what am I doing here? A Florida native in Portland. Hey, David, what's up? I figured it out. No, I know what makes us crazy. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> when you know you have 400 miles to ride in a day, and you wake up and go for a ride first. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love you, man. <laughs> I just realized my camera's record. That's David. Driving around Camarillo, you know, enjoying the sights, the mountains, the whole bit. And I'm like, yeah, okay, then I'm gonna go home pack, and then jump on the Pacific Coast and ride fucking all the way to South Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see you there, man. I'm, heading, I'm just leaving uh, Portland now. And it starts even better. Shit. Well, there's my first bonehead move. I really don't want to lose my camera. <laughs> An inauspicious start. And we're leaking fuel right at the tank. All right, well, mile one. Exciting. It wasn't even mile one. I was like the first freaking, the first 20 yards. Are we going that way? Okay. Man, if you just listen to the internet, you would think that Portland, Oregon was just like the epicenter for everything awful in the world. And I ain't saying anywhere is perfect, but every single person that I've met in Portland has been absolutely freaking amazing. The people at Legion Moto taking care of this, my man here, Abel, Circus Bear Moto, my man Jason from Sugar Tree Farms, just all the people that I so far have met in Portland are, are top notch folks so it just makes me kind of take it personal when you see all those memes that are just saying like people from portland need to shut up i'm like well who exactly are you talking about because the people i've met in portland are awesome circus bear moto taking me on the scenic route out of portland my gps is not happy but he knows his way around here a lot better than i do so he knows the good way to get to the pch I'll tell you, man, it's actually really convenient not having all those gears to switch through. Pull in somewhere and adjust that? No, it's fine. I'm just doing that normal, like, just got on the bike, like, adjusting my pants, being like, okay, how's everything going to ride and feel for the next 4,000 miles? <laughs> I do this every time I go on a long ride. Like, the first 20, 30 miles, I'm, like, grabbing and moving everything around. Running 65 miles an hour through this absolutely gorgeous country. I ain't complaining. Plus, anything above 70 miles an hour, I quickly found out on this bike, feels like you're holding on to your old lady's Hitachi, all right? You can only do it for so long. Hey, it'll go 75, but again, I, this has got to make it 4,000 miles back home to Tampa, so. Now, oh, Portland was cool, and the people of Portland were very cool, but I am very happy to be getting out of the city. Dealt with a little bit of traffic, a little bit of shitty drivers. Now we're off in the woods and on our way to the Pacific Coast Highway. All of a sudden, I feel a whole hell of a lot better. 
I don't think the stupidity of what I am attempting has really set in on me yet. I just keep like looking around and uh, my brain keeps going like, oh, you're still in Tampa, right? I don't know if it's the lack of sleep. I don't know if it's the hallucinogenics. I'm not really sure what's happening right now. I just keep going back and forth between, oh yeah, I'm in Tampa. I'm like heading to somewhere I know and all of a sudden look around and be like, no, wait, no, no, you are, you are not in Florida. You are as far away from Florida as you can get in the continent of the United States as far away as you can get. And you're on a 44 year old motorcycle that wasn't known for being extremely reliable when it was brand new. Well, I mean, it hasn't set in. I still am not really understanding it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go with the ignorance is bliss. Cause uh, right now I'm having a really good time. Yeah, as we come over this crest and look at this town on a hill here, definitely not in Florida anymore. Coming up to this mountain range here in the distance and I assume that there's an ocean on the other side of that. It's just so weird coming to the ocean on the other side of the country here because in Florida, when you go from the middle of the state to the ocean, it just gets lower and flatter. And here, it's just like we're climbing up to a cliff's edge, so like just leaping off of the edge of the, edge of the world, you know what I mean? You can see why back in the day, people thought the earth was flat when you, look, when you view stuff like this. And I can't imagine the first people to go across these mountains like not knowing that the ocean was on the other side. I imagine seeing that for the first time, that must have been just mind blowing. The build up to this is breathtaking. And I'm not used to mountains, so, and yeah, I'm sure someone in the comment section is be like, those aren't mountains, but come on, baby, I'm from Florida. I can't tell how far away they are. Like I love seeing them in the distance and I can't wait to see the ocean on the other side of them. But I, I, we, I, we, I feel like we've been traveling towards him for a while now. But that's all right. It's just like a roller coaster, you know, like this the roller coaster clanking up. <laughs> I just freaking love the anticipation. All right, here are the beans, 75 mile an hour on the four speed. Got to make it, make it past the half a house. We're definitely in the mountains now. You know what's amazing about the 79 shovel? It handles fine. I mean, the suspension isn't the greatest. The brakes leave something to be desired. It's not very fat. You know, actually it's kind of, it, 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 there's a lot missing. Okay, yeah. But it doesn't handle bad. Uh, it also scrapes really early. Well, I don't, what am I, okay. Basically, yeah, it, it's bad. But I really like it. It's chock full of character. And isn't a motorcycle being full of character? Isn't that what attracts us to a motorcycle anyway? It's like, yeah, some things on it suck. Of course it does. It's a motorcycle. It'll vibrate you to death. It doesn't handle well. It stops even worse. It might not start. Like, <laughs> if I wanted things to be perfect, I'd just drive a car. And if I really wanted them to be perfect, I just wouldn't go. Ah, the Pacific Northwest. I have been wanting to come here so freaking bad and I'm finally here, man. I cannot tell you how many videos I have watched of people running through forests that look like this. And maybe they look like this in other places in the world too, but to me, this is just, this is Oregon, Washington, Northern California. This is just what it looks like. My whole, I'm, th I'm 39 this month. I've never been up here. And my first chance to be up here ended up being on a 79 shovel head, uh, riding it back to Tampa. But hey, if you wait for things to be perfect, it ain't ever gonna happen. So baby, this is what we're doing it on. <laughs> I know these ain't redwoods or sequoias or anything like that, but damn, they be growing the trees tall up here, huh? That's why I just didn't even notice this for a second. I just looked up, I was like, oh, holy mackerel. And, and it's sunken on the bottom, like we're raised up. Like, dang, dude, those some big ass trees. It seems like, it doesn't seem real. It seems like a movie set. You know what it reminds me of? X-Files. It seems like something hinky is always happening in X-Files in the Pacific Northwest. Maybe it's just this old growth, these old trees. It just uh, speaks of a world that was here before, man. There's definitely just a little bit of uncanny valley about it that I really, really like. God, I can't wait to see some redwoods. Like getting to the edge of the world is what it feels like after coming up the It's just so wild to just come over here and just be like, and it just ended. You gotta imagine like what 
what the first people coming over those mountains must have thought. If you didn't know there was an ocean on the other side of it, right? You would just be coming over those mountains going like, well, holy crap, I guess that's the end. I've reached the end of the internet. That's it. Turn around and go home. Ain't nothing more to see. <laughs> Nobody in bikinis. I'm gonna count that as a strike against y'all. Over the mountains and to the end of the world. I like this. I like, did you see homeboys set up up here? It's, it's the grill for me. My man up here with the freaking beachfront property and a hibachi grill sitting out front. Hibachi grill and a freaking frisbee. <laughs> Are you allowed to camp there? Not really. Yeah, nobody told him. All right, whiskey for my men, beer for my horses, man. I'm hungry. Just like that, back from the beach, right, right back into the forest again. Man, it's the scenery out here is just wild. Little otherworldly. When I say it's the uncanny valley, it feels so much like the edge of the world that it's crazy. Just because the forest just goes right up to it. Dory Cove, this is the place to be in Lincoln, Lincoln Town or Lincolnton? Lincoln City. Okay, I was wrong on both counts. Lincoln City, Dory Cove is the place to be. Let's see how this place shapes up. From the outside, I will say, I was just like, where the hell are you taking me? What I should have known is from the size of him, which is a similar size to me, that he wasn't about to steer me wrong. I got crab cakes because they're homemade. The biscuit is homemade with butter on top. That looks freaking phenomenal. Razor clams, you almost got, because I've never had, do you mind if I grab a little piece off the end of yours? Yeah, okay, I've never had that. Damn, dude, Dory Cove. Damn. Delicious. Never had razor clams. That's so good. It's tartar sauce. What? Why did they got this in Tampa, man? Dude, razor clams a business or Oregon thing? Razor clams? Pretty much. We go dig them up by my father-in-law's place. Fuck out of the whole like, oh, That's one razor clam? The huge or something? That's one clam, yeah. What? Yeah, they can get they can get really big. Yeah, no shit. I thought it was like, oh, it's a bunch of clams pressed together. Like, no, that's one clam, dog. We learn something new every day. Razor clams, man. Holy crap, I gotta look up what these things look like. Dory Cove. I would have never expected it. This place just looks like a shack. And they, you say, those are always the good places. I get that, I understand that, but it really doesn't look like the food would be good. I was incredibly skeptical. And that just made it taste so much better. Like the higher your skepticism over a pla whether a place is gonna be good or not, and then like going back the other way, it makes it taste so much better. And it starts again. Excellent. Lincoln City, Oregon. I would come back. I would I'd come back just to go to Dory Cove and <laughs> have razor clams on those crab cakes again. That was phenomenal. Edge of the world. It just, with the forest on one side, coming over these crests and just looking over the side there, you're just like, man, this is it. This is the end of the world. The edge of the world. It just drops off right there. Dude, this whole town is so neat. I like it. I just saw a place called Rusty Truck Brewery. Again, all sorts of just like really cool little restaurants and breweries and gift shops around here. I always say it all the time, man. I don't mind a tourist trap. I'm a tourist after all. Trap me. And another brewery. And man, if I come to a town and that town, like a little beach town like this, and they've got enough breweries for me to try out four or five different breweries in one night, I'm about to have a good time. Oh my God. <laughs> I've been on the Pacific Coast Highway for about five miles and it's already just amazing. I also kind of want to point out that it's July and I am shivering. <laughs> it's about 95 degrees in Florida right now. And I love going to the mountains and being in the 70s and just being like, wow, it's so nice to leave, uh, leave all this crazy humidity behind. But it's about 60 degrees right now on July 7th or 8th, whatever freaking day it is. I am cold. In tsunami zone? <laughs> what? A tsunami zone? No, come on. That can't be right. Dude, the signs are everywhere. Tsunami hazard zone. Holy crap. Dude, Florida's so skinny. We're only like 150 miles wide. I feel like if a tsunami hit Florida, it'd just wash all the way over to the other coast. Just coming out of that forest and then boom. Drop off, baby. Right here on the edge of the world. amazing man wow like I said you know you can see why people 
<laughs> might have come up on this and been like, yeah, I don't know about that, dude. The world is flat. <laughs> that is just crazy. Oh, coming around the bend of this just mystical little town shrouded in fog in the Pacific Northwest. What adventures, wonders, what creatures still roam these ancient woods who've never yet seen the face of man, who are here before us and who'll be here after us. Weary and ancient creatures these are that roam, roam these fog-shrouded hills and on the edge of the world, ah, there be dragons. Wow, man. This is something else, man. It just like goes right up in the air. Holy mackerel. Can you see whales from here? Yeah. My man over here goes, I'm sweating. When you got to back a gold wing up. Yeah, it's it's sweaty work, man. I got you. <laughs> Yo, we pulled over here and I saw a whale. I didn't get it on camera, but I don't care. I saw a whale with my own bare eyes in the wild. Things I never thought I'd see. Apparently, you see him down here all the time. <laughs> all right, let's get to shoveling. <laughs> the world's smallest harbor. That was just too freaking cool, man. Too cool. Much better with a hoodie on. <laughs> <laughs> My man freaking Circus Bear Moto's going, I'm sweating out here. Dude, it's 63 degrees. My thin Florida blood wasn't made for this climate, okay? We don't have Sasquatch down in Florida. We got the wild swamp ape. That Mayaka wild swamp ape, man, he ain't like the Sasquatch up here, all right? <laughs> we, can't, we can't be taking this cold weather. My gosh. Going from whale watching in the harbor right back to this beauty of a road. I don't deserve this. <laughs> I don't deserve this, man. I am just one of the luckiest people in the world. You'll never not hear me say that. Rain away. I don't even care. Go ahead. Rain on me. I don't even care, man. Not with views like this, that's for sure. Wow. I mean, the Pacific Coast Highway was already a bucket list item for me, but just 10, 15 miles going down the PCH, and I'm already like, man, if I see everything else that I see after what I've seen already is half as good as what I'm looking at right now, you have to do this. Wow. Wow, man. Look at these. The way they're all blown over from the wind coming in. This is just insane. And an actual lighthouse. Seen an actual lighthouse. It's like out of a out of a snow globe. A lighthouse on the end of a of a little peninsula of rock sticking out like that? Come on, it's out of a postcard. Actually, I imagine we get up there, there is probably a postcard you can buy with that lighthouse on it. And we don't say goodbye, we say bon voyage. Vaya con huevos, mi amigo. Circus Bear Moto is going to go with the egg, and I am gonna continue down the PCH. There he goes, a high-powered mutant. Too rare to live, too weird to die. Circus Bear Moto. Thanks for taking the time out to show me around, my man. Hey guys, obviously here back at home, but I just wanted to throw a quick little interjection in here. Uh, Circus Bear Moto, who helped me out, you guys have been watching this video. Just a few miles after he left me right here at this part of the video, he was actually in a uh, absolutely devastating motorcycle accident. Uh, he was thrown from the motorcycle. He had a uh, five broken ribs, collapsed lung, lacerated liver, uh, his ruptured spleen, they had to remove it. Uh, he's been right now, as of me recording this and this video coming out, he'll be in the hospital for uh, over two weeks. So I found out the next day and just it really, I it obviously was thinking about it the whole trip and it, his wife uh, has been texting me and keeping me updated on his condition and she's actually 100% disabled as well. So uh, they did decide to start up a GoFundMe to kind of help bridge the app to till he can get back to work, which they don't even know when that's going to be. Like I said, he's already been in the hospital for two weeks. But if you got a couple, couple extra bucks, you enjoy my videos. Uh, hey, Circus Bear Moto Able was a huge part in this one being able to get made. So if you want to throw a couple extra bucks at him, 
I'll have a link down below to his GoFundMe. Uh, let's help a brother out. Appreciate you guys. What a freaking view. Oh, man. This harbor is insane. <laughs> Gotta come back. It's too bad it doesn't ever warm up here, man. It's just like the views just make everything look like, uh, the views make everything look like it should be nice and warm and everyone's running around in bikinis, but that is not the case. Oh, what are they doing down there? Dang, that dude did a whole, a whole freaking crop circle down there in the sand. <laughs> just like that, back in the woods. For people who live on the Pacific coast, going from woods to ocean just must seem totally normal to you guys. In Florida, it, you get to the, uh, beach it's palm trees man it ain't it ain't these trees it just the juxtaposition is oh and everything smells like weed here too it does in florida as well though so at least that's not any different just another another cool as hell bay i mean i live in a bay i live in tampa bay but these little coves and bays are so small that where you can tampa bay obviously you can see that it's a bay from from the air but just being able to see this little cove just mapped out right here just is so, it's so freaking cool. This is like these little bays and cove towns. They look like the site of some sort of, you know, romance murder mystery novel or something like that that takes place in this sleepy little village. Who done it? Who, who, who killed the town harlot? Was it the mayor who was having an affair? Was it the writer who's an alcoholic? Was it the jealous wife of the, of the butcher and the, and the fisherman? Like, all this stuff just seems like it's out of a book. I love it. I just had to pull off here. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but it just is so gorgeous. And I'm like, man, I can't just like ride by this and not stop for a second and check this out. And phenomenal, so beautiful. I mean, come on, man. How can I not stop? Oh, and partake in the majesty. <laughs> Just the scope of everything. that I am allowed to do this, <laughs> that I am doing this. I am just, I don't get speechless very often. <laughs> I, a lot of people wish I'd be a little more speechless than I am sometimes, but man, I cannot believe I'm just out here allowed to do this. I'm allowed to experience this. And I'm on a, on a 44 year old shovel head, man. On the same motorcycle, the same motorcycle that someone was out here doing this freaking 40 years ago, 50 years ago. And I get to do the same thing. Pacific Coast Highway, heading coast to coast, <laughs> from Oregon to Florida, on a shovel head, baby. <laughs> just, just like, just like your grandpappy used to do it, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, I love it because it's sketchy, but I also love it because, god damn, this is just how they did it, huh? <laughs> it's just on an old machine like this, rattling your teeth out, four speed, 65 mile an hour. That's how they did it, baby. And before that, they did it on something even older and slower. 
<laughs> oh man, there was there was guys were getting cussed at dudes with shovel heads saying they were cheating doing it on one of these. But I'll tell you, right now on this road, I don't feel like I'm cheating. I guess you're allowed, looks like you're allowed to drive a car on it, but whatever. This was made for motorcycles. Just these giant rocks right here on the edge of the beach. Oh, that's freaking amazing. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Oh, the high fizz. The high fizz daddies give me the wave. Got it from the Beamer boys. This is one of those roads where I'm doing it right now because the whole point is I'm not gonna come out here, pick up a bike in Portland, Oregon, and not ride down the PCH. Like, obviously I'm doing that, give me a break. But I just, the second I got on it, my first thought was I need to do this again. I've only been on it for like a hundred miles, but my first thought was I have to do this again. places that have tunnels that you drive through every day. I don't care, man. It's fun every time. This freaking climb, this old, I wonder how old that wall is there. Watch it be like, oh yeah, no, they built that uh, wall there to make it look old like 10 years ago or something. But it certainly looks really old. Definitely gotta be careful on right-handers on this bike. That two into one exhaust on the shovel head looks really cool, but it drags early and it's attached pretty rigidly so if i bite off more than i can chew with the lean angle on this bike i'm gonna be drifting into the next rain plane on the exhaust so definitely got to take it a little easy i don't i don't even want to go fast though just coming over the coming over these crests and having these views laid before me just for me and only me specifically placed here to please shade tree surgeon i don't even want to go fast baby I'm just down to go ahead and put along this road and enjoy the hell out of it. I'm still somewhere in Oregon, I think, and I've officially entered an elk viewing area. I mean, the, the, it, I guess it wouldn't matter if there was an elk or not, because the scenery is absolutely amazing anyway. <laughs> just as, I don't know why it strikes me as so odd. Are the elk the big ones? Are those the really, really big ones? Maybe they're really neat to see. I'm not really sure. I was going nuts because I saw a whale earlier, so. You know, maybe, maybe someone feels the same way about an elk. I don't know. I just want to go up to the elk viewing area and be like, you know, if you just keep driving like a couple hundred miles that way, you could see a whole ass whale. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta settle for an elk, okay? As I leave the coast and go inland, it is just, I, I mean, I've been around mountains and in between mountains before and out in the desert, but there's just something that about this in Oregon that makes you feel very, very tiny. I feel like a tiny ant crawling along this little path set in between these these giant trees and, and huge pieces of rock in the stream on either side of me right here. So this is an odd feeling. I feel almost like I'm like I'm sneaking down this little path past some some giant or ooh, maybe Bliss Welly, past some giantess's gaze. Uh, you know, just gotta sneak along my little path here with the tree covers on each side really an odd feeling man i i uh again i'm getting i'm really starting to more and more understand that whole just otherworldly uncanniness of of oregon and i really like it it just makes the mystical seem right within reach right within your grasp it's at both times unnerving and ethereal i ah, i don't know how to put it into words but oregon is magical you know, I, it's such an overused word, magical, majestic, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know, man, just the, the twee etherealness of, of, of all this landscape is really just kicking my imagination into overdrive, and I love that. Oh, God. It looks like I'm in a, 
a scene from an old western, but you know, not the old western that's like in Texas in the desert, but the old western that is in, you know, like California and Oregon and uh, Idaho. <laughs> There's just this stream running in between, in this valley in between these two mountains. What a cool scene. The um, Umpqua, Umpqua River? Yeah, I'm probably saying that wrong. I don't know why, it just looks like a scene from a movie where somebody be down there panning for gold while maybe there's a bandit up in the woods, up in the mountain watching them. Don't know what it is about this stuff. It's just crazy how much, I mean, it's still sort of the same as we were on the beach. We're already, the temperature's risen probably like 20 degrees. It's gotta be like in the 70s or, or low 80s right now. And everything looks the same, but also just, I can tell that it's different. I am gonna try to get a picture next to this cool river, hopefully without dumping the shovel head all over the freaking ground. Is that even possible? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, ho, ho. how brave am I? You know what? I'm feeling, I'm feeling brave today. Maybe not this brave. Maybe not that brave, but that brave, surely. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely not this brave. That is a long drop. But so now like every camera I have, I've used the GoPro, I've used my cell phone, and now I've got my, my handheld here to try and capture the majesty of what's happening right here. Like I can't believe I just pulled, Brand. it's not even like a rest stop or like a scenic overlook. This is just how this part of the world looks. This is just how it be. And I'm, I keep trying to somehow capture what it actually looks like with the camera but I don't think I'm doing it justice. I don't think that I'm I'm actually doing it. <laughs> I've been here for like 20 minutes now being like, okay, well maybe this will actually make it look right. Maybe this will make it look right. I just don't think that anything I do is gonna really capture what this really looks like to me. Like what, I, what I'm seeing with my eyes here and this, and this stupid old Harley that brought me here. I'm feeling really, really good right now, guys. This is freaking amazing. And this is just day one. Oh, I don't want to leave this place behind. Well, I, I couldn't bring a tent on the plane. I guess I could have, I don't know. I just plan to stay in hotels the whole way back, but man, just being next to that river right there, I would have loved to just, so it's too early to stop. It's way too early to stop. I haven't been on the road long enough, but I, if I, ooh, yeah, somebody's growing pot out here. <laughs> if I could have stopped there, I would have. That just looked like an absolutely amazing spot to kick back, have a J, smoke a big old nasty hog leg, have a few beers and relax. As it is, as beautiful as it was and as nice as it would be to uh, sit back there, smoke a little bit of the devil's lettuce and have a couple of ice cold beers next to the river. This road is also absolutely beautiful and I can't see what else this part of the country has to offer me, man. The Pacific Northwest, absolutely amazing. I just got an internet connection again. My music just started back up, but it started with like a weird intro. And I was like, oh my God, what's happening to the shovel head? I'm just experiencing the majesty of America and mother nature out here. And uh, the creations of man are gonna be my downfall. But luckily it struck it away. I don't think anything bad's gonna happen at all. They wouldn't dare not to shade tree surgeon. As we all know, God loves an idiot and I'm God's favorite idiot. So let's rock and roll, baby. I don't wanna turn off my camera, but I can't record 3,500 miles across America like uninterrupted. I can't record at all, but I'm just like, ah, ah, I don't wanna turn it off. I'm like, I, it's like making the judgment call on what's not beautiful enough to film is so hard right now. How could I ever be like, no, turn the camera off, not this. This doesn't deserve to get filmed. Like, no, man. All right, y'all. So uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Phone is dead. My GoPro is dead. And every single 
charging battery pack I have is dead. Yeah, I have no idea where I am or uh, what state I'm in even. Uh, a bad state, that's for sure. <laughs> Let's see if we can do something about this. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I wish I had had my GoPro on when I came around the mountain. That's Mount Shasta right there. There's a cloud on the top of it. But I will tell you right now, I audibly gasped. I mean, it's so huge compared to everything else. I literally almost couldn't believe it. And just the sky out here and everything out here right now is just so freaking gorgeous and so amazing. <laughs> this is day one. Obviously, I got my phone charged. I'm back on the road. This is something else, man. I am having the time of my life. And I'm doing it all on a 44-year-old Harley Davidson. Makes it even better. It was a, a harrowing adventure involving over a hundred miles of absolutely nothing with every single battery pack dead, a dead phone, a dead GoPro. So I have no way, you, you guys are just gonna have to take my word for it. I could be making it up. I could just be so totally full of crap. But I was a little scared because, you know, it's one thing to break down and have a way to contact the outside world. It's another thing to break down and be like, well, I guess I'm either gonna have to hope somebody picks me up or I'm gonna have to walk 30 miles. Um, I had about six or seven ounces of water though, so I think it would have been fine. <laughs> anyway, now I know everything's gonna be okay because talk about unexpected surprises is here in, now, I didn't quite make it to San Francisco, but uh, you know, did about 800 miles yesterday. It's not quite an iron butt on the shovel head. I pull in to Woodland, California, and who it, who is it but David himself. Once again, black hammer and white lightning on the trail. Mine fell the hardest. Mine is the deadest. <laughs> And some might say that David's a good man. Some might say he's a great friend. I would say those things certainly, but you could also say he's a fool because this is my <laughs> second time riding across the country and my second time just on a whim buying a piece of crap motorcycle that might break down and might not make it and it's super uncomfortable and it doesn't go very fast and it's a huge pain in the ass to travel with. This is my second time doing it in about six months and it's David's second time me telling him and going like, that sounds pretty fun, I'll go with you. It's the third time in 10 months. This is David's third time crossing the country in 10 months, dude. I don't know what's wrong with us, but I think David summed it up perfectly in the video earlier. As far as the shovel head goes, I did lose the speedometer, so that broke, but that's, I mean, it could be a worm gear in there. I've had the cables break on these things uh, multiple times. For everybody saying shovel heads, they, they, when they stop leaking, that's when you're in trouble. Shovel heads leak, trouble head, piece of crap. I want you to go ahead, this has been parked here all night. There is not one single drop on the ground. And yes, I checked it, they do have fluid in them, so it's not because it's out. There is not one single drop of oil underneath this shovel head. I just had a, I just had a feeling about this one. I think it was just like seeing a shovel head, a bike that someone normally makes a chopper and just like cuts apart and, and just messes, and not messes up because I love choppers, but seeing this one with the remote oil filter, the oil cooler, and kind of like the tough guy go fast parts on it, even though it is definitely not fast. In my head, I was just like, man, I think somebody really took care of this thing. And here we are, not a drop on the ground after a, doing 800 miles last night. Next time on the Shade Tree Surgeon Channel. Utah, baby! Yes, majestic is the correct word. I know it's cliche, but the whole place looks like a postcard. All right, let's see the next wonder. Hopefully the bison don't mind me fixing my bike over here. Buffalo are uh, moving this way.
but it still starts. Nope. So I keep hoping that somehow the, this decline will just magically make me start moving again. No, it's not going to. Five miles an hour. Well, this is probably not going to work. Oh, it's holding oil, or it's out of oil. One or the other. The tank is falling off. <laughs> so, um. it up at all. There's no way this thing ain't making it to Tampa. Not a fucking chance. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, man. If this bike breaks down here, I swear to God, you motherfuckers are dead. All right, guys, sorry to leave you all in a cliffhanger, but, uh, <laughs> There is so much footage here that it's insane. And uh, things didn't exactly, well, I don't know. Can they turn out like you planned when you're riding a bike like that across the country? Uh, I am in Tampa. The shovel head didn't quite make it back to Bart's Barracuda. Not quite anyway. That was the where we were gonna end it. And we actually, <laughs> me and Jay Lisi have a new shirt coming out that was supposed to commemorate the shovel head's journey across the country. Uh, this is a shirt that's gonna be exclusively available at Bert's Barracuda and Bert's Black. Black Widow, and that's releasing the day after this video comes out, Thursday, July 21st. Shay and I are organizing a ride up to Burt's Barracuda from the Dirty Shame. We're gonna meet up at the Dirty Shame at 5.30 p.m. and leave for Burt's Barracuda around 6.37. You know you guys keep it loose. Uh, this, Like I said, the shirt's only gonna be available at Burt's, and uh, you know Shay and I are both a huge Stephen King fan, so if you get the reference, you get the reference, go then. And there are other worlds than these, but it also seemed fitting for the shovel heads cross country journey. Anyway, uh, I'll be able to tell whoever shows up. And if you're there, I'll be able to tell you the rest of the story and <laughs> what happened before the video came out. So if you wanna come hang out, have some celebratory beers that uh, uh, we made it back in mainly one piece, then come on down to the Dirty Shame this Thursday. Meet us there around 5.30. We're gonna ride over to Burt's and we're gonna do some stuff over there, hang out, party, have a good time. And if you're not in Tampa and you can't do that, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit that bell because the rest of this video is coming out over the next uh, the next couple of uploads. So the next iteration of it will be out this Sunday. And then the final one will be out the following Wednesday. And then everyone will get to know exactly what happened to the shovel head. But it was just too long for one single video. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're watching. And make sure you keep an eye out for those videos. We'll be premiering every single one. And... I don't know. By the by the end of this trip, I was I was literally crying with with everything that had happened and everything that had been going on with the shop, with the bike going cross country. Oh, it was just so, so much. Right yeah, literally shit. <laughs> so it's been an emotional time. So if you guys want to come have a beer with me, I'd really appreciate it. We'll see you all at the dirty shame at 5:30. And if you can't make it to the shame, we'll see you at Bert's around 7:30. Till next time, y'all. Keep it weird.